Hi, it's Dave Stafford from IES Technical Sales and I uh, came across this application the other day. I thought it would be a nice thing to share. Um, this is a solid state relay that is completely melted. I don't know if you can see the top of this thing, but um, these points are completely melted and the wires that actually came out of them, as you can see, were completely melted down. It's like, well, how could that possibly happen? And uh, we did some investigations, and, and actually the customer um, was having repeat failures. Um, there were, it wasn't just one, it was multiple, and it was an ongoing issue. And uh, we had to do a little bit of research, and we think we found the problem. So, yeah, so what, what is going on? So what, what, well, this is actually a solid-state relay that's being used, and this is a, a, a general representation of the control circuit that they have. They have, in this dotted line, is their system. They have a thermocouple in their system that's going back up into a control. So the thermocouple is going into the control and telling them the actual temperature of their system. Um, there is a heater in here that um, is used to heat up the media that transfers the energy to the, to the uh, thermocouple. That's essentially our, our loop. Um, so the thermocouple is coming back and telling us the actual and there's obviously a delta between uh, the actual and the set point. These two things are never the same, obviously, and at some point there is a the difference between those two is a delta T, delta in temperature. So based on that delta T, the PID algorithm inside of the temperature control puts a percentage of power output and it basically ends up turning on and off some device that um, in this case is a, is a switch Originally, it was designed as a mechanical switch, so um, it came out the output. So this is a output for the heater. It basically came. It was a mechanical relay that basically turned this thing um, on and off mechanically. It looked not too dissimilar to an ice cube relay that I'm sure all of you guys have seen. Inside of this, there's just basically um, there's a coil in there that. Um, uh, when the controller turns on and off, turns that coil on, that's this part of it, there's a coil on top, and there's um, a mechanical contactor here that actually physically moves up and down and allows uh, voltage to flow through to 110 volts. So when this thing is on, power flows through the heater and um, back, and when it's open, this is open circuit so it doesn't allow it to flow. So when, when this thing is calling for heat, the output is on, this thing is closed, um, Voltage flows through the heater, back, the heater heats up the media, heats up the sensor, brings this up and uh, brings that output relatively uh, close to the set point. That's generally how that works. So what ended up happening in this scenario was that the original equipment was designed with mechanical relays involved. This says SCRs in here, but this was actually a mechanical relay. So with a mechanical relay, since it's physically moving up and down, there is a known number of uh, cycles that you can turn this thing on and off before it mechanically wears out. So in doing that, it, um, but that's fine to use if your process can take that, and, but what it implies is that you've got a long, a relatively long on time and off time, right? So with a mechanical relay, you've got either on or off. You can't have halfway on or off. So what you end up seeing is, um, Time under a curve, let's see if I can get a, a spot over here. So if this is um, your uh, time temperature curve, so this is uh, time, and this is delta T, temperature, right? Um, we have a set point, which is our desire. We have a, a, an actual temperature, it starts out at room temperature, and ideally we want the thing to come up to temperature and stay at temperature all the time. And what happens with a mechanical relay is that it's either closed or it's open. So when we're below the set point, right, this is uh, percent power on this scale, percent output 100%, zero percent. So when we are well below its set point, we have 100% power on, right, and when we get close to set point, we turn it off, right? And if you were to look at it from an analog standpoint, but what, it, you, what you would see is that 
at this point, this would start to you know, drop off and eventually it would become steady state where it would be at some percent power, say 40% power, 40 to 60%, something like that, as steady state. But again, we're looking at a mechanical contactor and all it can do, it can't be 40% on, right? Have 40% of the voltage running through it, it has 100% of the voltage. So what we have to do is um, uh, use something called time proportioning. So we're gonna open and close that mechanical relay so that it's closed 40% of the time. Right? So what does that look like? So to exaggerate it, so now we're say at 40%, we would be um, off for 60% of the time, on for 40% of the time, off for 60, on for 40. Right? We're just exaggerating this thing. Right? So this is the, the amount of energy under this, but so this equals this under this curve, right? So with a mechanical relay, and that's why that's the way mechanical electrical heaters are, are fired all the time. For the most part, 80% or more of the applications are fired this way with a time proportioned output. Can be used with a mechanical relay. The issue with a mechanical relay is that since there's only a certain number of cycles here, we don't want the thing chattering all over the place, so we want it to be on for a relatively long time. So something like as a minimum, like 15 seconds, could be a minute, could be longer, right? And that's fine for, for really large systems and, and things that aren't um, looking to control on a really fine basis up here, right? So this system was designed and had a control in it the, originally with a mechanical relay. So they had a time base in here, and I'm not sure what it was, but it, it's got to be, we'll say it's like 30 seconds. So this was um, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds on, and then... Um, whatever that would be, so that would be 40% uh, times 3, I don't know what that is, it's probably, uh, we'll say it's uh, 70, 70 seconds off. Um, that would be 30%, but um, you get the idea, right? Um, so it's off for a long period of time, on for a long period of time. Generally that's okay for a mechanical relay. So. What ended up happening in this case is that the mechanical relays were failing. So they replaced them all. They replaced them all with solid state relays. Right? And they work in a, in a similar fashion. And uh, as opposed to a mechanical relay, there's a, a solid state device that allows this uh, energy to flow through here. And the advantage of a solid state relay is, among other things, is it can be, it can be cycled very, very fast because there's no moving parts. Um, and so as you open and close this thing, it can be opened and closed as fast as 1 60th of a second. So one AC line cycle on, off. So this can be very, 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 very small, okay, which is great. So in the scenario with, with this guy failing, so well, how could this actually happen? Why did this thing actually blow itself up and melt? What ended up happening was this time proportion value, 30 seconds, one, one, um, one second, or um, one sixtieth of a second, is a variable that can be set in the controller. When they changed out the, solid, the mechanical relays, they didn't change that value, right? So what, it ended up, what ended up happening was that at some point along the, the way, this thing, as it heated up and cooled down, right, so this thing, um, when it turned on for that, we'll say 30 seconds, we had a fairly large amperage draw through this thing, and this device, um, one of the things that it, that it does um, is it um, isn't completely 100% efficient, meaning it actually absorbs some energy and it gets hot. So what ended up happening was, this thing would go on for 30 seconds, this thing would get hot, relatively hot, and then it would cool down and get hot and cool down, and get hot and cool down. And what happens when things get hot and they cool down? They expand and contract, and you get this mechanical situation where you've got this expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. Um, and what it did was, first it loosened these, um, uh, these torqued down lugs, right? And then once it loosened these lugs, the connection wasn't as good, so it wasn't as efficient as before, right? So, and, and as it continued to do that long on, 
long off, long on, long off. This basically it hotter and hotter and hotter and it basically melted itself down, basically shorted itself out after a while. That mechanical contactor, what it did was there's a, um, a device inside of here that's bonded to this heat sink and once it breaks that bond, then it can no longer dissipate its energy through this heat sink and it overheats. Right, so that's essentially what's happened here. This, the device inside of this thing got too hot from mechanical stress, it separated from the heat sink and um, it couldn't dissipate its energy and it shorted out. And they're seeing this thing again and again and again and again. So what's the answer? What's the solution? The solution is to go back into your control. If you're going to change from a mechanical contactor to a solid state relay, you need to go back into your controller it's, itself and there is a an output um, variable inside of that um, that's most likely a time proportion to output. You need to make that as small as possible and the solid state relay will love it. It's not going to turn on until it hits zero cross. So even though it um, may be on for one AC line cycle, it's not going to turn on until it sees zero and as soon as it sees zero it'll turn on and it'll be on for one complete AC line cycle. Okay, and so that's the solution, is to go back into the control, set um, your uh, time proportion output to uh, something at least um, as small as one second, could be shorter than that, and uh, obviously you need to make sure that you're, you're, um, you've got airflow going over your heat sinks and um, you, this is sized properly, but um, that is what happened in this particular case. If you have any questions, again, Dave Safford um, at IES Technical Sales. Um, it's uh, www.iestechsales.com. Thanks for watching.